channel this week. Thank you for joining me. My name is Riley. If you're new to the channel, I appreciate you coming and checking us out for my long-term subscribers. You all know who you are and you guys are awesome. This week, we're going to dive into a species sort of focus and just kind of take a look at one of my favorite animals, period. Uh, my favorite big snake and the only one that I have any intention on keeping, the Papuan Python, Apodora Papuana. So let's take a look. Alright, so this guy here is my male Apodora Papuana. And he's about a year old. And just shed, he's I'd say around four feet. So he's still still growing, still young, but for a yearling he's he's well on his way to becoming a big snake. Now these animals are in a monotypic genus Apodora, meaning they're the only animals under that classification currently, and you know how science is always changing, so who knows what the future will hold. But these guys are found in the, uh, the lowland and subtropical areas of Papua New Guinea and off some of the surrounding islands. And they're known to get over 4 meters long, which is, you know, roughly 12 plus feet. Um, they're they're very similar to a, a scrub python in their their build behavior and uh, and kind of the climate requirements and how they live. Except these guys just they seem to really be quite more uh, cold tolerant and just kind of big powerful animals. They're also known for being ophiophagous, which is uh, that they will eat other snakes. So the big concern with breeding these species is having a mate to be consumed. Um, captive propagation of the species hasn't happened too frequently. There was an individual a few years ago, I believe 2017, 2018, who had a, a healthy clutch. And then it's kind of been some years before we've had any regular production of these in the States. So they're not exactly common in what you're finding are imports these days because Papua New Guinea does have a, a managed quota for importation. Now, these snakes are very, very powerful. They have quite a grip. They're very strong animals, even at this age. And they are just beyond impressive. They seem to have very black skin underneath their scales, which causes all this color to really just come out. The inside of their mouths are jet black. So if you ever get a bluff display, it's quite intimidating from these snakes. And they'll, they'll thump you if they need to. They're quite powerful. Now these guys do really well at a lot of uh, our standard python temperatures with the hot spot around, you know, high 80s. Nowhere above 90 and then allowing them to dip cool into the 70s or even high 60s at night. They prefer a lot of humidity. And uh, they just really are quite impressive animals. They're pretty active, so you can keep them in a rack. However, if you really want to see what they do, something with glass front or uh, a visible window will be definitely appreciated by the keeper as they're quite fascinating. They like to come out and bask and sit out and display during the daytime. And then at night, kind of tuck themselves away. So it's really interesting, and you don't get to see that if you keep them in a rack. The other thing is you get to see this beautiful, beautiful iridescence. When they shed, it's, it's quite fascinating. It's amazing. i got to stop saying fascinating. I'm just obsessed. So this guy here I got from Dan Maleri as a little hatchling. I would say maybe beginning of January at the last Anaheim show before COVID shut us all down. So he's right around a year old and when he came to me he still had his umbilicus slit so he was a little fresh baby. Potentially the smallest and freshest I've ever seen come in of this species and Dan said the same thing. So they all come in with some level of scarring as you can see. He's got some remnants here but they shed out and disappear very nicely. So they clean up really well. But they have very thin skin, so it's easy for for you to kind of understand how a a prey, a prey item might 
you know, injure or bite them and leave a blemish, but they're just ridiculously tough snakes. I had to pose him on this log in order to get him to sit still because he's pretty active. You know, you think of scrub pythons, once you get them out, they like to explore. These guys are no different. So, just wonderful, wonderful snakes to keep. And I, I'm really excited to watch this guy grow. I do have a female coming in uh, from my good friend Eric Burke. He managed to purchase uh, a captive born and bred baby from one of the few clutches that was produced in the States within the last few years. And so we're going to sort of join forces on this and uh, see what we can do because it sounds like there's a lot of resurgence and interest in the species as people are starting to learn more about unique animals and find out about all these other species that are out there that they didn't know about. And this is obviously a unique one and very large and captivating. So when people find out, they're really, really ecstatic to learn about these guys. So um, with any luck, in a few years' time, we'll have a compatible pair growing up. They do seem to mature slowly. So I'm not expecting to be able to even attempt breeding until they're around seven years of age or so. Because we're going to grow them slow and steady, keep them lean, keep them... Keep them healthy and uh, see how it goes. But the female that will be coming in is a little bit bigger than this guy, about a year, year older. So should be a well-established pair in time. So we shall see. But I'm absolutely in love with this species. As I said earlier, this is a wonderful large species and probably the only big snake I'll ever keep. After this, I don't think anything can really top these guys. And I love berms. I've worked with plenty of scrubs and retics. But these guys just take the cake. You'll often hear these guys referred to as Papuan olive pythons. And they are not olive pythons at all. So that common name is actually a bit of a misnomer. They're not found in Australia. They're not related to the Liasis olivaceus from Australia completely different. They don't even look the same. Their color is different. Their head structure is different. So these are correctly referred to as Papuan pythons or Apodora papuana. All right, well, I hope everyone enjoyed meeting my uh, my favorite big snake, Apollo, here. My favorite large species of snake. He's a little giant for now, but give him time. He'll be, uh, he'll be too big to fit in the frame of this type of screen in no time. So he barely fits in my hand, you know, well enough to capture a photograph. But I'll try and throw some photographs up uh, right here for you guys to see. Because every time he sheds, uh, he just looks a little bit better and better. And I just... I'm absolutely in love with this snake, even though he doesn't sit still long enough for me to show him off. So, But this is my male imported Papuan python, Apodora papuana, Apollo. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, more informational sort of rehearsed vlog style this week. Uh, next week I think I'll come at you with uh, a little bit of highlights of some of the pairs I'm attempting to breed this year and uh, kind of show off some of those projects and what we're hoping to produce in the coming season. So until next week, thank you all for joining me. I appreciate the support. Appreciate y'all hanging out and I will catch you all in one week. Love, peace, and chicken grease. Later.